Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Roost. I'm the Associate Dean and Executive Director of the Pre-College here at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Thank you for joining us this morning, this Friday the 13th, and going into a new moon. I hope everything goes well for everybody. Um, I am pleased to uh, invite um, Eileen Blumbergad uh, to talk with you today a little bit about College Match, which is a service that helps uh, students find their best college match, uh, gain admission, and win merit money. And a little bit about Eileen Blumberg-God. Uh, she is a violinist herself, uh, having studied at the Manhattan School uh, and uh, attended many wonderful programs uh, that I'm sure she can tell you a little bit about. Um, and she's also a graduate of Stanford. Um, so uh, we are very pleased uh, to have her here today to talk to you a little bit about this service of what it is and provide just a little bit of information. Um, I encourage you to uh, submit your questions as you have them via the chat box. And at the end, of course, we will have a little bit of time for some Q&A, uh, which I will help facilitate. So uh, thank you, Eileen, uh, for joining us today and providing uh, our parents with uh, access to this uh, information session. Thanks so much, Michael. Yeah, hi, I'm just looking at your chats here. So it looks like we got a seventh grader and some 10th graders, which is great. Um, so let me, let me explain a little bit about um, my background. Um, Michael sort of covered it, but um, so I was a BA uh, music major at Stanford. Uh, music and French, um, and then worked in finance for a while, um, and actually I've been doing this about four years now, I'm working, but I'm working with a group called College Match, which has been in business for over 20 years. Um, I specialize, I work with kids kind of across the board in all, you know, in all areas um, in terms of, uh, you know, different profiles, uh, music students, uh, but I specialize in performing arts students. Um, and I've, I've helped quite a, a variety of kids um, with their arts, uh, what we call the art supplement for college. And, um, and they're just basically helping them, you know, really position themselves in a way that they can a have access to the top schools. Um, so this is a, a sort of this is an overall, this is a presentation actually is made for, not for music kids. So I really would, um, I'm gonna make it pretty short because I wanna be, um, you know, really kind of tailor it to you guys because you're obviously at uh, the conservatory for a reason that you're probably very, all very talented musicians, but many of you I'm sure also have other uh, skills. And um, so I'll explain to you very quickly with, before I start this, this presentation, um, what are the difference between what we do and what other college counselors do. Um, basically, when you start with a college counselor at your high school, or even at most college counselors that are out there, uh, usually start junior year. And at that point, it's sort of like handholding. Um, you know, the kids work with, uh, you end up, um, you know, basically they're telling you when to take the SATs, they'll help you with your essays, but they're not gonna be positioning you in a way that you are in to sort of, uh, we call it flag and tag you in a way that a college will say, wow, this kid is not only a really amazing student, and has you know good test scores, by the way, which are counting or test scores are, are a little bit less important now. I don't know if you followed the recent, um, the UCs are not looking at test scores anymore right now because of the pandemic, uh, it's, all the schools are test optional and that may or may not change um, depending on what happens with COVID. And, but everything post pandemic will be a little different in terms of test scores. So the colleges will be looking at, you know, your kind of overall picture, your grades, your, your um, your which classes that you know, if you've taken most challenging classes, but also, um, you know, what you've done with your music and what you've done out, outside of school. Um, so that's where it's really important to start early. And so we'd like to start with kids actually sophomore year. So I'm just looking at and some of the kids we've started with actually as early as eighth grade. But um, yeah, so let me just go through the presentation very quickly and um, be happy to this, this presentation is more about your questions and how what we can offer. Um, versus, you know, what you get would get at your high, at your high school. Um, we've had a lot of success in getting kids, you know, from the sort of mid range, where they would be getting into a sort of an average school to much more higher level schools, or helping them get merit money. And that's a whole nother, you know, another. Um, it's it's sort of another specialty, but we also we specialize in getting kids merit money. So, all right, let me go on to here. So, new words. So let me go back. Sorry, new rules to college, college admission. Um, let me close the chat box. Excuse me if I'm a little slow here because I'm uh, new to this, um, these, these online <laughs> webinars. All right. So, um, yes, I said gain admission, wear merit money. 
um, go here. All right. Uh, all right, so find your purpose and purpose and fulfill your life. Um, one of the things we do at College Match is um, not only we not only do we help kids sort of position themselves and figure out what their their, their deeper values are. Um, some kids know. Some kids really, you know, they're good at everything, um, or, or they're or they really are school. but they don't have it about outside of school. Hard to know when you're 15, but you might have a good idea of what you're good at and what makes you excited, right? Um, so part of us, our, our program is not just about, you know, finding the right match in terms of a college, but also, you know, helping you sort of plan, like life planning or life coaching for kids. Um, so I'm sure you guys all have your students, your, every kid has a dream about what they might want to do. You know, and um, their parents, your, obviously the parents have, may have the same vision or may have completely different vision of what might be practical, practical for their kid. So we work with families to try to basically find a compromise. <laughs> sometimes they're in agreement and sometimes they're in total disagreement. So um, we, uh, you know, we, we talk with, we work with families, not just with the kid, we work with the parents and the kid uh, and, the, and the, your students um, to sort of, you know, make their dreams a reality or, you know, or, or put them or make them a little bit more, help them be a little bit more realistic in their goals. And so do we, you know, so we have a, we find an area of, a, a, a area of compromise basically. So when we start working freshman year, we talk about sparks. So, um, or eighth grade even, um, their spark is a passion that you might have. And obviously, you're passionate. All of you are passionate about music, but you might have something else you're very good at. Um, so we start with freshman year, was working with their sparks, trying to hone, you know, uh, their skills so that they're they can position themselves to be, uh, uh, so that they're when they get to their junior year, they're um, they've already done a lot of different things like competitions. Um, they've gone out and done community service. In, say if it's music, they've done several competitions. They may have played for, you know, done started some small community service um, activity related to music. Um, and so that their spark turns into fire, so fire a sophomore year where they start really building themselves up and put, putting themselves into sort of a winning things at the community level or at the state, eventually it's the state and national level and sometimes international level. And then vision is junior year is when we kind of put, bring it all together and they have, the student has a vision of what, schools they might want to go to, where they might want to go with their life. And then we can, we have a whole list of colleges that we present to them junior year. And that's a working document through their junior year. And then brand is senior year, where I hate to say brand, it's more like positioning. So your child will be positioned in a way that uh, he or she uh, will stand out. You know, he won't, he or she won't just be the uh, good student, good musician. And, you know, um, but he or she will have a uh, be able to create a profile so that the college will really recognize this child as somebody really quite different from what the other, from the other kids, the other um, uh, students that they're looking at. So, why does the right the right college fit matter? Why is it you know why are we trying? What's, what is it about matching the right college with the student? Um, well, if you look at statistics, thirty percent of kids uh, transfer actually for either their freshman after their freshman or sophomore year. So, meaning that they weren't happy with the school that they chose. Uh, six and only sixty percent of college students actually finished within four years. And sometimes it's just because they found the wrong, they had to transfer, they just chose the wrong school. Um, and by the, and it's also the largest invest, like second large investment for most families. College. So it's really an important. It's really important to find the right fit, the right match. Um, so finding the right match involves sort of your vision, as I talked about earlier, you know, what your student's vision is, your, what your family's vision is for your st student, um, gaining skills and experience in meaning experience, it could be work experience, it could be in this case, you know, music performance experience, um, and honing your whatever skills you have, whether it's music, whether it's creative writing, whether it's if you're a science kid, you, whether you've done a lot of, you know, um, lab work or inter internships, we can help with all of that. We've had experience working with kids, sort of different profiles and helping them find, um, you know, summer jobs, um, really good uh, summer camps that will give them hands-on skills and so on. And then the last thing is obviously cost, which is it's a big one for a lot of families, um, and location and prestige. And prestige is another one which, you know, 
there are a lot of very famous schools out there, as we know, we know that we know the names, you know, Stanford and all the Ivies. And in the case of music students, um, probably a lot of them stand out like Northwestern, Rice, uh, USC, UCLA. Those are just sort of the top of my head. Um, but there's a lot of But but it, there's other articles out there that are so you can get most of the time you can get a, a, not a better education at a school that doesn't necessarily have the label right um, so there are basically six types of, of colleges liberal arts and if you have any questions afterwards you can ask me but um pomona is an example it's worth more these are smaller liberal arts schools a hybrid school is sort of you can get you can get engineering and liberal arts at the same time so um santa clara is with local school very good in engineering also has very good liberal arts villanova is another uh, research institutions uh, at Stanford is considered research, actually. Michigan, UCLA, um, Stanford is sort of a, a, between a hybrid and a, and a research institute. Uh, Polytechnic would be like uh, Cornell, UC Davis. Another is the RCI, um, oh, sorry, RCI, the um, RSI, uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in, in um, Troy, New York. Jul specialty schools, we know New Julie, we all know Juilliard or NEC. Um, Babson is actually a business school. And then um, these state schools are very usually good for teaching. Like if you want to become a teacher, there's usually a lot of our students have gone to state schools. Um, so this is you know the two different directions you could take, either liberal arts or pre-professional, meaning if you really want to go to a conservatory, it's pre-professional. If you want to get more of a liberal arts education and be a music major, then you go that direction. Um, I'm going to skip some of this is not. Well, this is applicable. There's different types of schools. If you want, for example, um, to, be, to get a, become a doctor, there are better schools to go to if you want to pursue medicine and, uh, um, and uh, become pre-med. So there's feeder schools into medical schools. There are feeder schools into PhD programs. And we could help you with that if you know that you want to do one of those professions. So um, colleges in general look at a student, it's called the holistic admissions process. And um, so this is kind of a, oh, it's like a vague overview, it's a very generalized overview of what schools look at. They look at your academics, obviously your grade. They wanna make sure that you take the most challenging classes um, that, your call, that your high school offers. So there's sort of a trade-off between, between taking really challenging classes and getting good grades. Sometimes it's better to take, you know, some challenging classes, but some classes that are, you know, a little bit more realistic, so you can keep your grade point average up. So it's it's a trade off sort of trying to find the right balance between super hard classes and, and getting good grades, right? Um, class rank is not, it's an issue now, it's sort of not politically correct to talk about class, class rank. So it's not every school actually gives this college a class rank, but if, if, the, if the college, if the admissions committee does a little digging, they can sort of figure out where you are in your high school class. Um, standardized testing we talked about earlier, they still exist. This year, they're all, it's every school is test optional, but in a couple of years, the private schools will probably be taking them back, uh, looking at SATs and ACTs again. Um, SAT subject tests are sp like specific, like um, gr specific, uh, class so you take it for example math two or chemistry or biology it's a specific class that's a it's an sat subject test which you might be familiar with so our students usually we tell them to take either the sat or the act and to take a few subject tests and the other thing that they look at is obviously activities which is why you're here you're all your music all the you know as i mentioned earlier competitions you may have participated in and in anything outside of outside of school that can show that you had leadership for example if you're leading an orchestra or if you have a string quartet and you're, you know, you're basically you're the one who's managing it. That's a leadership, you know. So there's different ways of showing that you're lead a leader within either academics, if you're on the student government, or if you're, um, you know, somehow a leader in music or in some other organization, some other after school activity or in within the school um, activity. Okay, so this is a very quick overview of, of for example, USC. Um, actually, this is a little out of date. The admissions rate right now at USC is 13%. Um, and so what this shows is that it says 13%, but actually, in, if you don't have, if you're not a legacy, let me actually go to the next slide so you can see what I mean. Um, if you're not a legacy, an athlete, or an underrepresented minority, 
those are 40% of the of 16%. So you end up with, if you're none of those things, you actually, your ch chances of actually getting in are 9.6% or less. So sometimes the, when they say, um, you know, a percentage, you look at um, US world, I uh, think US report of colleges and they'll tell you an admissions rate. It's usually not that very accurate because it really depends on, you know, these other groups, if you're a recruited athlete or a legacy or a first generation college student, you much have a much higher chance of getting into a school. This is a very quick overview of Harvard. It's got a lot of detail in there, but um, this is probably from a couple of years ago, but um, yes, from 2000 up to 2019, um, 2014 to 2019, it'll show you, show, basically shows you that if you're Asian or you're white, it's very much more difficult to get into Harvard. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's difficult. So that's why uh, all your music, everything you can do outside of school um, will really help. So these are, these are just test scores. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it shows you that, that uh, it's, it's all the more difficult um, if, you're, you know, if you're Asian or white, and it's, it's all about positioning. Once again, we have had, we've had a few students get into Harvard. We've had a stu few students recently get into Yale, and it's um, all those kids already have very good test scores, very good grades, et cetera, and it's about really getting them to a, a, a place where they can really sh shine in whatever field it is outside of school, music in your case. Um, I don't know if you've heard that basic college look college is really like well rounded students that's what we used to say in the olden days if you're well rounded you'll get into college well these days it's more about being angular meaning that you really want to be as I said I keep repeating the same thing but very specialized in one or two things outside of school that really make you stand out and so that's where we can help you position yourself so that you get to a place where you're that kid that you know does that's the musician that is the, you know, uh, helps his, um, has a community service project in whatever it might be. Um, we coach kids to try to figure out what those uh, areas of specialty might be in that so they can stand out. So a lot of, we could talk about dream colleges. Um, everybody sort of has a dream college I, um, in, in our experience and, um, a lot of times our students have gotten into their dream colleges and not because they were really, um, you know, the, all of the students that we've worked with, most of them have very good uh, academically and they have something outside of school, but really what we try to help them do is tap into the school's unmet needs and believe it or not, even the Ivy Leagues have un unmet needs. Um, and so that's kind of one of our strategies, one of the strategies we use in the positioning kids is to try to figure out a way of, of presenting our students in a way, such a way that they're tapping into an unmet need of a school. So when you do visit a, these, a college, um, usually we recommend it during your junior year. So um, you'll, it will be next year for your sophomores. Um, we recommend if when post pandemic or even pre pandemic right now we've had uh, kids just go on to virtual um, tours. But eventually when you can visit a school, spend at least half a day at the school, take notes, talk to faculty, talk to students, really get a feel for the school because it's, it's really, it's awfully hard to know um, when you're, you know, from afar. And um, I visited over 40 colleges and I have my own opinions about these different schools, but you know, it's really personal and it, it depends on what your, your family, your family's needs and your personal, you know, you're, it's a very um, subjective uh, things. So it's, I highly recommend when you get a, a list of schools that you really are considering to go visit. Um, so when you apply, uh, it's usually the end of your, you know, yes, their senior year, early senior year. Sometimes we start to have our, we have our kids start to think about um, their essays, maybe even the end of junior year, but starting the, the summer of after your junior year. Um, so we like to say that colleges don't want to admit a student, they admit an application, which is what I've been talking about this whole presentation, like positioning yourself, present, really getting an application, a solid application so that your essays are really interesting, so that they can see clearly that not only do you have good grades and good recommendations and so on, but you're, um, there's something about you that they, they notice, right? And so it's, it's not, it's all, I, I want to say marketing, but it is marketing in, in a way. So, um, and um, supplemental essays are very important. Uh, we have a writing strategist that actually helps you with the essays. I do some of the editing as well, but the, we have a specific um, person that works with us that's a, a creative writer and, um, and is very good at helping kids you know, 
uh, create a sort of a work of, of art in a way in these applications. So it's really uh, engaging, it engages the reader. Um, so the most the most important things um, that you really need to concentrate on, I'm just repeating what I've said earlier, um, I said essays, academic awards and music, in the, or in this case in this group, musical awards and honors and activities outside of school. Um, this is the personal statement, which is starting, uh, you know, because this is where I talked about creativity, unique language. This is where our, our writing strategist helps. Um, so this is our, you know, our team has been doing this for over 20 years. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's sort of a life path approach versus college, pure college counseling. Um, we have also worked with kids helping them get into high school, but um, it's mostly college at this point. Um, this is one example of a kid that's a musician, so I thought this would be kind of a propos for this group. Um, Kim was a violinist, uh, a very good violinist, and still is a violinist, by the way. Um, she really wanted to either go to medical school and possibly become a surgeon or, or pursue music. She wanted to do one of those two things. The parents said, well, either you really, really put all your eggs in one basket and, and go to music school or go into business, you know, where you can actually make some, some money if you can't go into music. And um, so what she ended up doing was um, she was you know, good at music and at in science. Uh, she ended up going to uh, Oberlin and doing um, the conservatory program there, and then also doing a, like a duo degree in biology, which is a five-year program. They have many five-year programs in that school. Um, there are several others I could mention if you have any questions about various schools where they have a, a dual degree program. So we have a one-on-one -on -one service. We can talk about if you have any questions um, about, about our service, I can answer those after this. 96%, um, actually last year it was 97% of our students got into one of their top three choices and, uh, of schools. And then 70% of our students received some kind of merit award averaging $80,000 over four years. So I do, we have a, do have a book and um, we offer a free introductory, introductory phone call. Um, I'm going to put after this, I'm going to figure out how to put my phone number in. And I think I put our website on there um, in the chat, but yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. <sighs> okay. All right. Um, let's see if I have a look at the chat and see what questions there are. Um, 11th grade, 10th. Okay. All right. Great. Um, Okay, I got through my first webinar. Um, <laughs> webinar. Um, are there any questions? Uh, you can unmute people if you want. I mean, some, or, or write a chat, whatever, um, whatever you prefer. Um, be happy. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my information in here just so you guys all have it. I think I put earlier put our website in. This isn't. This is the general website. Mine is. As I said, I specialize in the performing arts students, but. I've worked with athletes. I've worked with sort of kids of every profile. And with my phone number. Don't be shy, folks. If you have uh, any questions you like that are kind of burning, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, Eileen and, and College Match is a great resource if you're looking for, to see what and, and how um, the work that you're doing in the pre college now can help you stand out as you apply for uh, schools that are perhaps not schools of music. Um, so if you have any questions, happy to uh, read them off here. Um, we have a question here, are college match services on an annual fee or is it all inclusive? So, um, it's, so it's usually, uh, well, I, there are two, two ways we do it. Usually um, if we start working with kids sophomore year, we recommend, recommend sort, of an all, sort of an all inclusive um, fee where um, it's usually 45 hours of work and uh, we start sort of, uh, we have an initial consultation, we have a deep dive into their personality and, and values and so on. We talk with the, with the parents and the, and the students, not just with the student. And then we have weekly sort of bi-weekly meeting and not bi-weekly, every other week we'll meet with the student just to sort of coach them along the process to make sure they're on the track. We give them, very, we're very proactive about kind of making them making we give them an action plan and we make sure that they actually do the fee you know, we don't just say 
option, it's a, um, we can talk about fees. We usually recommend the package because it's a lot cheaper and it's, um, and it's very comprehensive because we also help them help you. It includes our, um, writing strategist helping you, you know, with the essays and so on. So it goes all the way through the process until you get accepted to college. Um, I also work on an hourly basis. So if you want to just do a, a consult, I, as I said, the, our initially, if, if we have a free phone call, half an hour, 15 minutes to actually 15 minutes, usually to 20 minute phone call where I'll explain everything, our rates and so on. And then um, I can work on an hourly basis. I, if it's, if you're a junior or like a senior, we have boot camps and that is a kind of a different thing. It's usually on an hourly basis and it's usually just sort of getting you in gear, like, you know, helping you with the application process and getting things done. But yeah. it's, at some point it's kind of too late. So it's, I mean, not too late, but it's hard to you can't position a kid. They're already seniors, so. Yeah, so uh, we've got a question here, 12th grade, right in the middle of application, is it too late to get your service? It's not too late, no. I mean, I'd be happy to help to talk to, like, we can at least help you with the essays and making sure that you're, you know, filling, checking out the right sort of position, you know, really making yourself, it, it, whatever we can do to help you, uh, your profile, basically. It's, it's a little late, but we can definitely help seniors. We, we're doing it all the time right now. I don't know why people are late until the last minute, but that's what happens sometimes, so, yeah. Just give me a call or just shoot me an email. Um, any questions about music school specifically? Are you are you guys all listening to? Are you thinking about, you know, going to a, a conservatory or going to a conservatory program or doing a double major or doing a music major or? Do you have any questions about Stanford even? Looks like I know a lot about that music program. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering if you have any specific questions about colleges. I can answer those. Just give a moment to people to, to type in if they need to. And if there are no uh, additional questions, I know that Eileen will be more than happy to take questions offline. Uh, for those of you who are joining us, um, she has put her uh, contact information in there. I would highly encourage you to reach out. Um, looks like we got some questions popping in the chat now. Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with music faculty at your dream school? Well, you know, in my experience, the best way is just email. You can find their emails usually in their, um, I mean, depending on the school and depending on the teacher, because, you know, it is a little bit, it depends. I don't want to generalize, but in my experience, it's usually you can um, reach out to the teacher through the music department and an email. Um, and some of, you know, depending on the teacher, some of them are a little bit, <laughs> I don't want to say prima donna, you know, but but in my general, in my experience with students that have tried to find teachers, they've actually found out it's, that most of them are very happy to have, you know, give you either a, a you know, a trial lesson or um, in, 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 you know, it's usually a free trial lesson for most of them in my experience and because they want to recruit kids if, you know, especially if you're talented. So, um, yeah, and, and just to, to, to piggyback on that, Eileen, for conservatories, um, like you said, that you know, you look at their websites, find their email addresses. Uh, they're usually accessible. If they're not, you can contact the admissions office. And oftentimes, if they're looking, some schools do have some policies that you have to have submitted an application before you can do a trial lesson. But uh, to Eileen's point, getting getting it out there ahead of the game and contacting them. Uh, just writing to them directly is 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 a great way, um, and then also through your private teacher and through summer music programs uh, and festivals is another way to 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 connect with them at kind of more personal level. Yeah, there are examples of, for example, the Aspen Music Festival, which I attended for a couple of years, where I was able to. Um, I didn't end up studying with those teachers, but I, I know of people that study with with you know, say the concert master, and then he taught at UV Michigan, and then they, you know, like they had developed a relationship, and the kids, some of those kids, ended up going and getting in at least to University of Michigan thanks to this teacher. So it is a good way to um, to connect with teachers, and yeah, and um, probably yeah, they, they want you to apply or show that you're really interested in applying, um, because otherwise they don't want to give you much. Know, Otherwise, they'd be giving lessons, you know, all over the place. Just and um, it's a little bit like contacting a sports coach. I would always say that, you know, if you're if you're a good soccer player and you're not flagged, you haven't the schools haven't found you yet. Um, reaching out to the coach, showing, sending your videos, you know, promoting yourself basically is what it is. And then, you know, the more you or you're out there and you're the more visible you are, the more likely you are to to get their attention. So, um, what type of musical achievements really make a difference in the application? So. Huh. 
Yeah, so that's a good question. And it's, I have a whole list of different, different in levels of, we call them levels of, you know, what the schools look at and, and whether it's music or something else. Um, usually, you know, a D1 recruitable athlete usually is, is looked at, unfortunately, a lot of these schools is, is more important than, you know, a, a concert musician, but it really depends on the school. And um, basically you want to aim as high as you can, starting at a local level, but getting to, you know, state and then eventually an international, international level. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a little bit of a, I can't be that specific. I'd have to go through a whole list of, of, of competitions and so on, and then, you know, sort of um, get into the nitty gritty of which ones look better than others. Um, and then can you expand on ways to show leadership? How can we learn about the school's unmet needs? Well, that that's where we help you. Um, you know, that's a it's part of our, uh, as part of our expertise. And um, you know, if, if you want to give me a call or, or shoot me an email, I can I can help you uh, with that. And showing leadership is, you know, some of it's obvious, some of it isn't. Uh, if you're a part of the student government, you know, that's an obvious one. Um, but there are other ways. There's, you know, there's all kinds of summer programs out there. Um, some of them are worth that are a little bit more um, reputable than others. So we we have those that knowledge, and we can help you with that. Um, Okay, let me just see if I've ever been through 12 million uh, college match services on an annual fee. Yeah, um, yeah, it's not. Um, I answered that. Okay, I think it's let's see pre college student council self directed concerts and community service. Yep, those are great opportunities we provide here in the pre college. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. Wow, there's a pre-college. I didn't know that pre-college student council. How, yeah. how, how old do you have to be? What's the, is there an age limit? Uh, so it's just generally high school age. High school. So, uh, you know, if it, as a student is really looking for an outlet for them to show leadership, uh, we've found that even, uh, you know, for those students who are homeschooled, uh, finding those avenues or outlets to do leadership is, a, is sometimes a little trickier. Uh, so, you know, the pre-college, one of the things I did... Um, uh, last year was our first year having a, a student council, and it's a great opportunity for the students to lead on specific projects. Our student council is working on community building and doing some benefit concerts this year, which are great ways in which you can show that you are uh, not only exercising leadership, but also participating fully in your community. Uh, and then our certificate program in the pre-college is yet another opportunity for you to build that uh, that that brand. Uh, and we have at the high school level three different kinds of certificates that you can get. You can get a performance certificate, a community uh, service certificate, or a scholar uh, certificate. And that gives the students an opportunity to show where their values are and what they're really committed to. So, and that's another opportunity to show leadership because all of those projects are self-directed. So looking for those kinds of things within the pre-college uh, is really valuable. And that's stuff that I'm here to help you with uh, if you need as well. Thank you, Michael, that, that's great. Um, those are great opportunities and those will be definitely looked at by colleges. Um, I see there's one other question that says, would love conservatory information. Yeah, I guess it's a very general question. I have that information and Michael has that information as well. So it really depends on which school and, you know, it's, that's a very vague, it's a, you know, general question, I want to say vague, general question. So um, we could, it needs to be a little more specific and we can definitely help you or, you know, Michael or I, both of us probably could help you with that. Um, do you submit San Francisco Conservatory and transcript to university as supplement? Oh, your grades? <laughs> um, I don't know, Michael, I don't think, you know, you, the most, so what art supplement usually is just your playing, right? So depending on, that, that thing, other thing I did not address is whether if you wanna do a bachelor of, of fine arts in music or bachelor of music or a bachelor, um, sorry, there's BFA, there's the BM or bachelor of music, and then there's BA in music. And they're a little, they're different, they're all, the BA in music is just a general, um, still a lot of work, but it's, you know, music theory, uh, music history and performance, right? A bachelor of music is much more performance oriented. You still have to do the theory and all that, but it's really a performance degree. Um, and then BFA is all performance. So like, for example, Rice University, um, that's a BFA. You're in the conservatory program and um, 
you can take classes. You can do a double major. It's very difficult to do. Um, certain things you can major in. You could do a dual degree, excuse me, um, but you do a conservatory degree. And then there's only certain subjects that will actually work to do a dual degree with. Um, if you can't want to do engineering and, you know, in the conservatory program, it's not possible, for example. So there's, you know, it's very school specific. Um, but in terms of the grades at the conservatory, I mean, you could submit those, but that wouldn't be part of your art, art supplement. What your art supplement is your playing, right? In your artist statement, your personal statement. Um, and that's, it's all um, the BA. If you're applying to a BA for a Bachelor of, of Arts, it's a much, it's a smaller um, art supplement. It's just not, it's not as, as uh, specific. If you're applying to a Bachelor of Music, then you have to submit, usually it's a scale and an etude and three contrasting pieces. Um, singers, for, for singers, it's a little different. I'm, just, I'm talking as, a string, as being as a string player or as, or as a pianist. Um, yeah, so they're all, they're a little, there's three different um, avenues for musicians, for music majors. And then you can, in some schools, you can do a music minor. But um, in general, even if you don't end up doing a music major, it's it's great to you send, in an art, send in an art supplement because it'll help you get into a school. That's an admit need. A lot of these schools really want to build up their music programs. They don't have, you know, uh, Dartmouth has not a great music program. And so you apply there and you say you want to be a, you know, pre-med or pre-law or business, but you're a really good musician. That's an unmet need at that school. So um, if you know specifically that there are schools that that are trying to uh, do better with humanities students or in the performing arts, that's where you can you have a better chance of getting in if you send an art supplement. Or everyone can just switch to playing viola. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and to answer um, regarding the SFCM transcripts, in case someone doesn't know, uh, we do provide transcripts for the pre-college uh, that lists all of the classes and courses that you're that you've taken here in the pre-college. Uh, we stamp and seal that, and we are happy to send that uh, both uh, in a you know a snail mail or uh, by uh, digital. Uh, we, we all every year we have folks who ask for that um, as they submit that um, uh, with their applications to supplement their, uh, their applications to show really what have they done at the pre-college. And, and I have to say that as a student of the pre-college, much of the training that you're doing goes far beyond what most colleges have the capacity to de deliver. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have students who pass out of a lot of the music theory and aural skills stuff in, at the conserva like conservatory level uh, on that stuff. So schools do like to see that and they like to see specifically what, what are they been interested. In. And again, that's another opportunity for you to show what your value is. You know, if you have a kid who's, let's say they're a violinist but they happen to be taking a bunch of courses in technology in applied composition and music, and they happen to have a really unique spin. They're not just a you know, run-of-the-mill concert violinist. They happen to be engaged in this other aspect, which can be reflected in that FSCM transcript. So definitely uh, ask for us, uh, ask that of us. We're happy to provide it. Yeah, and there are also schools out there that are interested in those types of students um, that, you know, are music or composers that, um, you know, that are sort of in the field of, like you said, the, the Thai program and kind of that's a really different um, sort of a new, newish um, spin, as you would say, it's on. Um, and so it's, those are, those are very, very important. And not only that, but even if, you know, your grades, uh, you know, they don't count that in your GPA, it still shows that you have got grit and you've got determination and that you're very, you know, a, a very, um, driven and extremely well organized student because you've not only you've got, probably all most of you guys have great grades academics generally speaking in, in your regular schools but you're also doing this full schedule on a saturday that just says something about you right there that you're already you know you've committed to doing something that's you know that was not anything that you had to do and you're and you're excelling at it so it's almost like you're basically like being in two, you are in two, two different schools and, and doing really well in both of them so it says a lot about you even if it's not just about music it just it says a lot about your character and that's what schools want to know about is who, who these kids are and how, how are they going to add to our i mean how they're going to say how are the, how is this kid going to add to harvard i mean if you're applying to these very competitive schools um they're, they're going to look at say, so what is this kid going to add to my to our um you know to our campus and to our uh, and so you'll have a lot to add you'll have a lot to uh, to offer basically by showing that you have this these uh you know your this extra um these extra skills 
And um, so let me see, uh, do transcript viola power. <laughs> yeah, viola power, definitely. Um, yeah, it's a very good, beautiful instrument. So. Well, I, you know, I want to thank you, Eileen, for uh, uh, opening the session up today to provide our parents with some information on the College Map services, and also just to give a, a, a bit of an overview of um, what to expect as you're applying to colleges and, and what kinds of things you should be keeping in mind as you uh, start to position yourself for uh, that next stage in life. So uh, thank you uh, for spending time with us and, um, and thank you to all of our, our parents who joined us today to learn a little bit more about College Match and ask some really great questions. Um, if at any time you have any questions about uh, you know, the process, um, I am also happy to uh, answer anything as, as it relates to SSCM or uh, your students' development here and uh, pursuing music beyond uh, the pre-college. And of course, Eileen, uh, she has shared her contact information. Yeah, in I'm gonna do it one more time because this is a long time. I think, I don't know if everybody's seeing all this, but I'll just put it at the, at the very end here so everybody has it. Yeah. Great. Um, so we'll just uh, wait to have that come in. And then there'll also be a recording of this uh, that'll be shared with our uh, all of our families. So if there's something that you missed or wanna take, take a look at again, uh, it'll be there for you. So uh, thank you, Eileen. Yeah, absolutely. And feel free to shoot me an email. I think I left my phone number up there as well. Um, I'll usually respond to the email and we'll, we'll get, the best way for me actually is really phone because I just email, I, I prefer you know personal contact, but uh, I'll respond right away and, and we can have a phone chat if you have any questions. The senior that was saying that they needed help, I'd be happy to help, um, but we should start now because <laughs> it's, yeah, time is of the essence. So um anyway thank you so much for you know for letting me do this and um i'm really happy for you know that you guys that, and that you all came um by the way the seventh grader eighth grader you know it's really good to, to look now at seventh grade is a little early but as early as eighth grade we started to work with kids sort of just starting to think about these things because a lot of times it's interesting you start talking to the students and um they realize they uh, sort of some lights start going off in their head and it, um so it's really all, all about um thinking you know starting early in the process and, and, and thinking, thinking about things over the years. Um, and um, anyway, thanks so much. And I think there's somebody else that just entered the way you were. <laughs> well, a little too late, but we'll make sure he gets the recording. Thank yeah. you, Eileen, and thank you, everybody. Thank you everybody for coming. Okay, bye-bye.